Hello, my name is Dr. Art Rastenhad, and today I'll be discussing MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsies. I'll provide an overview how the technology works and basic tips and tricks. Before we begin, I think it's important to understand how the technology works. Fusion technology uses three components. The first is the MR imaging. The second is the software used to combine the ultrasound and the MR images together, and this is accomplished through surface rendering, which I'll describe in a moment. The third component is the tracking mechanisms. In this platform I'll be discussing today, it uses electromagnetic tracking. Other technologies use different ways to solve this problem, but tracking itself allows for the real-time ultrasound imaging to be combined to allow you to target and track the prostate. This is an example of fusion biopsy. On the right side of the screen, you see an ultrasound of your patient's prostate. On the left is the high resolution T2 image, which we use to surface render and target during the procedure. Fusion biopsy and fusion imaging essentially just combines the two data sets together. And it allows us to take the benefits of two different modalities. First, MRI has a high sensitivity and specificity of seeing and identifying lesions within the prostate. And ultrasound, well, is relatively inexpensive and available in most doctors' offices. So when we can combine the two, we're able to guide, track, and record these biopsies in 3D space and correlate it with their MR images. This is an example of surface rendering. See those small triangles on the contour of the prostate? Well, these contours and triangles are created both for the ultrasound and the MRI and we're able mathematically to combine them together to match the data sets to allow you to target specific areas within the prostate. This is a simplified version of co-registration or fusion. The co-registration of two data sets, if you look on the left side of the screen before registration, you see image one and image two. These two images are not aligned. While using the corners or those things that are labeled as fiducials, and we're able to take that data set and line it up. For surface rendering, we use the triangles as our fiducials. And after we line up the data set, you're able to see the target and the fiducials align, but it's usually not perfect. There's always a degree of target registration error, which is labeled TRE, which is your point of interest, as well as the surface rendering or the fiducial registration error, which is also represented on the right side of the screen. It's always important to review the images before you perform a fusion biopsy. You need to look, look, and look again. It's always important to review the axial, sagittal, and coronal views. This allows you to plan your approach. You can also look for internal fiducials to hopefully improve your registration. You can look for BPH nodules, cysts, calcifications, and or the urethra. Looking at the top row in the upper left-hand corner, you see an axial T2 image of the prostate with a left anterior lesion marked. Moving across, you see a dynamic contrast enhanced MRI color coded in the middle box, and to the far right are the raw images. You see early arterial enhancement. Moving to the bottom row, in the lower left hand corner, you see a parent diffusion coefficient map. See that dark area with the crosshairs? That's identifying an area of restriction. The middle is a color code of the ADC map laid on top of the T2 images. And in the lower right corner is the dynamic contrast enhanced MRI contrast enhancement curve, which shows an early uptick and early washout. This is indicative of prostate cancer. So before moving on to the next slide, I think it's just really important to understand that reviewing your images will impact your results and make you a more successful person while performing these fusion biopsies. This is an example of segmentation. See in the lower left-hand corner, there's a T marks the target. There's prior biopsy cores are superimposed over the images because I'm replaying this case for teaching purposes. It's always important to look at the segmentation to make sure it's correct and outlines the prostate because this can affect your results. You can see the images in the coronal and sagittal views at the top of the screen. Always look at the relationships of the targets to other natural structures seen within the prostate, as in the interface of the central gland, as well as BPH nodules and the urethra. Patient positioning and setup is always important. 
The patient is placed in a left lateral decubitus position. Notice how the shoulders, hips, and knees are all squared up. This allows for easy orientation as well as the machine seems to function better when you're not adjusting for a secondary rotation of the patient. Notice the machines. The first is the ultrasound machine, which is next to the patient. I typically place it here because I use the high resolution ultrasound also to evaluate the prostate during the procedure. And my technician works on the left, which is the Euronav device seen here. Here's just another example of the correct orientation for the biopsy. It's always important to square the patient up, shoulders, hips, and knees. Now, this is an ultrasound sweep. You're taking a picture of the prostate. The sweep is important because this is how you obtain the ultrasound data set for surface rendering. Notice how the bottom lower corner is a frame. The edge of the prostate is always included within the entire picture. If you cut off a portion of the prostate during your sweep, the surface rendering will not work as well. And as you know, there's some deformation of the prostate with your probe. You need to minimize this and optimize imaging at the same time. But elastic warping technology can correct this. I typically don't use this because I like to see the raw images from both data sets and do any mental corrections myself. Again, it's a slow, even sweep. Once you have this, this sweep has been performed, the data set is collected, and then the computer is able to surface render it or segment it. As in the upper left-hand corner, we're reviewing the images right now. We set the apical uh, slice and we set the slice of the base and place the orange arrow in the middle of the prostate. This creates our axis. Now, we'll segment the prostate by outlining one slice of the prostate. You don't always have to do this, but for teaching purposes, I am not skipping any steps to allow you to understand how the technology works. Typically, my ultrasound technologist performs this while I am holding the probe inside of the patient. It's always important to make sure your ultrasound depths are set the same as in the left upper corner and the right lower corner on the opposite side of the screen. This is in real time. We're reconstructing and segmenting the prostate. Once this is completed, we will confirm that we have good ultrasound segmentation and move on to the next screen. Notice how the purple dots outline the entire prostate. In this screen, we are performing co-registration, which we're combining the two data sets. The computer has already placed the prostate in 3D space with regards to its MRI. However, we fine tune it at this point. Typically, we start with the upper right-hand corner, the sagittal, to improve some rotation. With the newest edition of the software, this has become less important because it's almost automatic. As you can see, my fusion picture in the lower right-hand corner of the screen is live. I'm checking this while adjusting my co-registration with the other three planes. We're making some fine-tuned adjustments in the left upper corner. You can see where the mouse arrow is. You can only adjust the screen once it's highlighted in green. Again, we're just checking our pictures, looking at how our alignment is. And in the bottom right-hand screen, at the same time, I am reviewing the data and making sure it lines up. It doesn't always have to be perfect here. I typically go onto the targeting screen and I finish up fine tuning while I'm attempting to start the biopsy. This is the same patient that you appreciated the image in the beginning. Notice here's the target and we're looking at the segmentation. During the procedure, you should be looking at the red outline confirming that the ultrasound correlates because there's some deformation here However, the outline is very nicely aligned. We're able to place our needle up to the level of the lesion, relax, and then fire the biopsy gun. This sampled the portion of the anterior of the prostate. Notice how this is almost two centimeters before the lesion starts. Therefore, most biopsy needles do not reach this point. We align, we mark where the lesion is, and then we perform this in the sagittal plane. Typically, I take two biopsies per lesion. Some people can take more when learning to make sure they optimize their sampling. However, again, notice how I am reviewing the ultrasound image, rotating axial to sagittal, and make sure that the prostate sticks. The bottom screen you can use to look at your MRI and look for internal fiducials. And this allows you to confirm your targeting. 
I think it's very important to understand that this is a, a live case that you're able to look at it dynamically changing. You can see how movable the prostate is. So it's difficult if you were just using cognitive means to locate this anterior lesion. Notice how the needle is there. It's placed right in front of the lesion. Again, it's placed into the prostate and then sampled. The needle is then removed. We mark the region so we can record where we did sample the area. And all the fusion biopsy machines, if you look in the upper left-hand corner, the record button should be on so you can see how you did. You can track your progress. You can review the information with the radiologist to see how you're doing. I think it's important to understand that you must have pathology correlation when performing this to improve your technique as well as your radiologists. This is another example of a fusion biopsy. In this case, you'll see me struggle, adjust, and realign the MR image with the ultrasound image that we're obtaining live during the procedure. You can see the green and red cartoon, which represents the MR targeted lesion. And on ultrasound, you appreciate a hypoechoic area. However, if you look closely, the red line does not exactly line up with the contour of the ultrasound image of the prostate. During this procedure, you'll see multiple times we freeze the screen and realign the prostate image with the ultrasound image. Here the tech is adjusting the MRI to match the contours. You see me continually shift between my axial and sagittal views with my N-Fire ultrasound probe. This allows us to check the registration in multiple planes. See that hypochoic area that does represent the lesion. However, if you look closely, it appears that the registration is still slightly off. During this procedure, you should take your time. You can appreciate different landmarks and the anatomy using the bottom screen of the MRI. At this point, you see that the prostate segmentation, the red outline, is slightly rotated to the right. My technologist then rotates the image back to make it perfectly square with the ultrasound image that we're obtaining. The next part is maybe shift it over a little bit to line it up. See how the contours start to match? It's important to understand that there is some deformation posteriorly of the prostate. So when you look at the anterior portion of the prostate, this does help you line up your fusion procedure. As you see me move back and forth, the outline is starting to really stick to the prostate. And as you begin to appreciate this, you can do this at a faster and faster rate. This is the sagittal plane we're trying to adjust. My segmentation was a little, I, my initial segmentation on the MRI, I missed the anterior fibromuscular stroma and some of the views. Therefore, you have to understand that if there is a mistake, you can correct visually, understand that that anterior portion maybe wasn't segmented exactly correct. Here, I'm just appreciating the sagittal view, aligning that hypochoic area. It's important to understand the better quality your T2 image is, the easier it is to perform the procedure because it improves your segmentation, as well as it allows you to review the image below. We're going to line this up again. This is an uncut case, allows you to really see what happens during the procedure. See how that lines up very nicely? I push, I put pressure, I, rela I release the pressure. I see that it's a hypochoic lesion, but for the, for the sake of the case, I'm readjusting so we have a better representation of the fusion. Sometimes when you're performing the procedure, once you're convinced of the hypochoric area is the lesion that was appreciated in the MRI, you do not have to fine the tune the fusion as much. This could maybe save you some time. See, I'm able to place the needle, fire it through the region, mark it, and record it. This allows us to compare the prior imaging 
with the pathology they retain. I think it's really important to have pathology review so you know if you missed a lesion or the lesion was a false positive. In summary, imaging is everything. It's important to understand the higher quality your prostate MRI, most likely the better results you will have. Also, with improved imaging, you have better pictures during your procedure to look for internal fiducials. As we stated before, it's important to understand how the technology works, allow you to see the shortfalls of maybe poor segmentation that you're able to correct for during the procedure, as well as how EM tracking and surface rendering works to understand how important your sweep is. And a slow and steady ultrasound sweep is very important. It's important to make sure that you do not deform the prostate during the sweep, or at least enough pressure that you can mimic if an endorectal coil was used. Always use those internal fiducials, those BPH nodules, the urethra, and even hypocoic areas themselves that correlate with your MRI-directed target. And it's always important to look while you perform the biopsy. Sometimes firm, high-grade tumors, you can bounce off the side and just miss them by millimeters. It's important to record your cases, review them yourself, as well as with your radiologist to improve your interpretations of the MRI. Thank you so much for your time and attention during this brief review of MR ultrasound fusion-guided biopsies. If you would like more information, please feel free to email me and or visit my website where there are more videos on how to perform an ultrasound fusion guided biopsy.